month of May, we have a special treat from Down Under, the Crocodile Dundee of Physics, Stephen Crothers. We begin with his April 2018 talk at the APS. Steve will be discussing relativity and black holes later this month, so hang in there and enjoy the ride. In formulating his theory of special relativity, Einstein defined time by means of clocks. But time is no more defined by a clock than pressure is defined by a pressure gauge, speed by a speedometer or gravity by a graded spring. Time is not defined by clocks. It's naturally fixed, manifest in the motion of uh, bodies such as celestial bodies. By defining time by clocks, Albert Einstein detached time from physical reality. In actually formulating his special theory, he, he tacitly assumed that he, could construct, that he could construct systems of clock synchronized stationary observers consistent with Lorentz transformation. There's a couple of quotations there from Einstein to that effect. However, this, this assumption is false. Systems of clock synchronized stationary observers consistent with Lorentz transformation cannot be mathematically constructed. They don't exist. What Einstein effectively did was take one observer, assume that it could speak for all observers on the basis of his assumption that he could construct that system. Here is a review of uh, Lorentz transformation as used by Einstein. We have initial conditions and subsequent conditions, and the standard uh, Lorentz transformation is there, and I'm sure you're all aware of, uh, are familiar with it. However, to demonstrate that Einstein's assumption is false, I construct a system of stationary observers by using a, a number sigma and a number x1, which is arbitrary but greater than zero. This is an infinite set of equivalent, or this is an infinite set of observers. And if I make this system now consistent with Lorentz transformation, we find that the system can't be clock synchronized. As you see, the time changes, subject to sigma. If sigma equals one, you have Einstein's privileged observer. A privileged observer violates the basic tenet of his theory that there is no privileged observer. Similarly, if we construct a system of clock synchronized observers and make them conform to Lorentz transformation, we find that they can't be stationary. Again, if sigma takes the value of one, we get Einstein's privileged observer. And that's one observer, and that violates the tenet of theory. Here is a simple Venn diagram. We have two sets, two infinite sets of observers. The only overlap between the two sets is one observer, namely sigma equals one. And that's the observer that Einstein allows to speak for every single observer in both of those sets. But you see, one does not const constitute a system by which anything can be synchronized or anything can be said to be stationary with respect to anything else. The signature of Lorentz invariance, uh, th th sorry, the, sigma, uh, the uh, signature of Lorentz transformation is Lorentz invariance. So now we consider this, the wave equa or this, this um, equation for space-time interval and substituting in, for instance, the condition for stationary observers, we end up with this expression. And it's Lorentz invariant for every single value of sigma. Similarly, if I substitute now the system for clock synchronized observers, we find that for every single value of sigma, it's Lorentz invariant. That means every value of sigma satisfies Lorentz transformation, not just Einstein's sigma equals one. So if we equate these two systems, one for the stationary and one for the clock synchronized, this is identically equal only for the single observer sigma equals one, otherwise they're not. We can go further now to the standard wave equation. On the left, we have the differential operators. And we find that if we equate these, putting these differential operators rather into the wave equation, we get this long expression in the center. We note that this is invariant only for one observer, sigma equals one. So the idea that the standard wave equation is invariant under Lorentz transformation is not true. It only happens for the privileged observer sigma equals one, otherwise it does not. Some consequences of these facts, which show that general or special relativity is entirely false, 
are extensions to general relativity. Well, that's not going to hold as well on the basis of special relativity itself failing. But there's more detail in these papers.